Hello everyone! It is Toxic Moxie taking over the Art Snacks YouTube channel for tonight so that we can do some spooky inky art. Hello, hello! Of course we have our skeleton hands. Hopefully everyone's having a relaxing and good night tonight. All right. Well, I think I've waved around my uh, skeleton hands enough. <laughs> Had to start out the stream with skeleton hands, obviously. So we're here tonight to do um, one of the prompts for, let's see. I think my video is sideways. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can fix it. <laughs> Hopefully that's better. Can everybody see okay? Anybody want to? Shout out in the chat. Let me know if the video is straight and <laughs> not sideways. Because it's going to be hard to watch if we're... I mean, you could still watch it sideways, I suppose. Well, we're going to do this vertically instead of horizontally. Let's fix this. All right. So as I said, I'm Toxic Moxie, also known as Meg. And we're here to do the Art Snacks Ink Challenge. Today is day five. And our on our handy dandy prompt list, we have jars and vials. Some witchy goodness. Hey everybody, thank you for uh, chiming in and letting me know it looks good. <laughs> Definitely wanted the video to be facing the right way. Um, so let's get started now that the video is the right way. So I, I figured we'd start out first by just going through what I have here. Um, so I have all my supplies from the Art Snacks Ink box. Um, and everybody, I believe, got different colors of ink. Um, so let's start with that because the ink is the most important part, right? It's an ink challenge. So I have this one, which is Chinese blue. I have a Chinese blue and then I have bright red. So those are my two inks that I'm working with the whole month. It was a challenge at first, but I'm starting to get a little used to it. And then of course I have all of my fine liners, King Art fine liners. And then I have my blue marker. And of course, you can't do an ink challenge without a white gel pen. And this is my favorite one too. So, all right. And then we got two more pens. We have a brush tip one. I think this is Pentel, yeah. And then this one's more of a nib, the zebra one. All right. So we got all our supplies and then my personal supplies that I also use because I figure why not. So I sketch with a mechanical pencil that I have purple lead. That's my new favorite color that I've been sketching with. Um, I usually use blue, but right now I'm using purple because I want to try something different and that's what I use. That's the one I'm using right now. I highly recommend it. I love it. It erases really well, which is good for me because I draw like very, I press on the paper very hard. And then of course I have my water cup and I have a little water squirt bottle. I use that to dilute my ink down, which is something I really like to do. And I have my palette, which we'll put over there. So we have that. All right, so let's actually move this. Let's get situated here. We'll put this up here. 
All right, so we have do, 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 my jars and vials artwork that I did the preliminary sketch on um, because my, for me, my sketch process takes the longest amount of time. So I wanted to actually ink with you guys tonight. And if I did a sketch from scratch, we would be here for hours for me just like sketching something out. So this is my, my art for the jars and vials prompt. We've got plenty of jars and vials here full of all sorts of different stuff. Um, all right, so let's see. So the first step, now that I have my sketch down, is we are going to start doing the outline. Sometimes I do ink first and then do an outline over the, like, the ink, but today I'm going to do the outline first. So let's see, I'm going, I usually start with either, depending on how small it is, I'll do the, the two or maybe the three, but we'll start with the two. Cause I can always make my lines thicker later on. So I usually try to start with a thinner line for my line art. And then I can, if I want to go back and thicken lines, which I, I usually do, certain lines I'll thicken up just to make it a little more interesting. But for me, I find it easier to start small because you can always start with a thin line and make it thicker, but it's a lot harder to go from a thicker line to a thin one. Um, so we're going to start with the two. All right. So let's see. I'm going to get myself situated here, get myself at a good angle. All right. So let's start. And I have to say, I've been seeing a lot of really awesome art so far for all the prompts. I mean, we're only on day five but it's so cool to see everybody's interpretation of the prompts. I think that's my favorite part. So pretty much I'm just going to go over everything with this thinner fine liner and hopefully not mess up my line work too bad. We'll see, but that's okay. Do our little skull, little skull charm that he's got hanging off the witch hat. I'm gonna be turning this around all when I I don't know how how you guys do it, but like when I'm drawing, it might I'm always going like this the whole time. <laughs> so you're gonna have to be patient with me because I might be twisting this around a lot. Um, let's see. So let's do. And hopefully my hands aren't too shaky because sometimes I end up trying to fix my lines because I have a squiggly line. This guy's got like concern lines right here because he's got a some kind of spell coming out of his little wand. All right, let's see. I'm kind of all over the place. Let me make sure I'm in the middle of the screen at least, or try to be. Yeah, th that is true, B pair. I also, as you'll see <laughs> through this, that I turn my I turn the paper however I need, so it's spinning all around constantly. So we got his little cheeks, and obviously my ghosts always have little fangs, and this one has a blep because he's very excited about this, I'm guessing magic that he's doing. All right. I'm going to try to go light on this. I'm 
and I'll try to remember to talk because sometimes, and I'm sure you guys know that when you get in the zone, you're just like in the zone, you know? But I'm here, I promise. <laughs> okay, we're going upside down. But being in the zone is good. That means you're really enjoying what you're doing. And that's really all that matters, right? You gotta like what you're doing. All right, and he's got, you can see his part of his toe beings, but not, not all of them. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, I'm really glad I sketched this first because otherwise we I would have taken up the whole live stream trying to draw this. Do a little line there, boop. And he's spilling stuff out of this because obviously I've come to realize this ghost is basically me. And there's one thing I do when I'm doing art is I make a mess a lot of the time. I've got a bunch of little stars. All right, let's see. And then we got some liquid in here that's pouring out. Let's see, probably gonna have to spin you again. Then once I get this done, we can do the fun, the really fun part, which is the inking part. Well, this is inking too, but. I don't know about you guys, but I love drawing little bottles with like random stuff in them. So this prompt was super fun because I have this little, I have a little fire, little fire sprite in here, a little fire spirit. That's in this one. And then I've got a little like science beaker. With little measurements on the side. All right. And I love how all these jars are kind of precariously stacked on each other. We're gonna do really light lines in here because this is where the glass is and I kind of messed that up, but that's okay. I'm just all over the place. All right. There's like no rhyme or reason to like where I start with this when I'm inking, like when I'm doing my line work, I kind of just like do it all over the random place. jar back here. And we got a little little baby jar over here with a skull on it. He's got a little sprout coming out of his head. He had a little bit of stuff in here and another little sprout. All right, and then we've got some mushrooms. 
because anybody who knows my art knows that I love to draw mushrooms. So I guess some of these potion jars are actually terrariums. I'm always hard on myself when I draw jars because like I'd never use a ruler for it. I kind of just freehand them so they're always lopsided, I feel. But I tell myself that it gives them character. Because who likes a boring jar that's completely symmetrical? And we got our little ghosts here. Now this was completely unplanned when I started the challenge, but it turns out that these little ghosts that I've started drawing recently, um, apparently are gonna be in every single um, Art Snacks ink piece I do this month. And it's always, it's weird because I didn't do this on purpose, but I realized that yesterday I was looking through, besides the first day, because they weren't in there, every single one, let me show you just because like this wasn't on purpose it's so weird so like just to share so that's day one and then day two i have the three day three three again and then day four look at this one two three it's so weird because i didn't do that on purpose and now that i noticed it i'm like well i'm gonna just keep doing three little mini ghosts every single day because I feel like they add like a lot of fun to it because they're always doing silly stuff. I think my favorite one was the one where I had he's wearing like the little mini sweater to match the big ghost. And this jar has a night sky in it. All right, let's see. All right, I gotta flip you around. And this is like kind of like a quick line work because what I usually do is once I throw down like the colored ink, after that part's done, I usually go back in and like touch up my lines and add like a little more detail with maybe one of the smaller fine liners because when I'm laying down all the different layers of the ink, eventually some of the lines get a little bit faded, so I gotta go back in and darken them up. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about like making perfect line work right now. I'm really just trying to lay down the basis of the line work, that way I can start putting my colored ink And this jar is probably my favorite. It's a jar with toe beans on it. So I wonder what's in this jar. Tiny cats? Maybe. And one of my little ghosts is stuck in here. Although... He doesn't look too concerned about it, so. And he's got some random ferns in here. So yeah, I'm not like worried about making my lines like super perfect or really even thinking really too much about the thickness of my lines right now because I'm, as I said, I'm gonna go back. That'll be my last step where I'll add all my little details I wanna add after we put some color. All 
All right, and let's add a little bit of There we go. I'll add some. See, I'm getting two. All right. I think. Oh, yeah, I have one more little moth in here. There we go. All right. So the basis, I think I got all of the basic lines down so now what i'm going to do is carefully carefully i'm going to use my giant eraser this is i love this thing you can tell i've been using it for this challenge because i have purple lead all over it but um i'm gonna put that there so i'm gonna take this carefully because i don't want to rip the paper and i don't want to like smear anything but it should be mostly dry i'm gonna go and i'm gonna erase all of my purple lines and they might not completely go because as i said i press really hard into the paper i've given up trying to correct that i just consider it part of the art at this point all the indents or lines i can't erase and we're just gonna and this helps me see where I need to like clean up my lines if I missed. Because sometimes, because I have so much pencil on there, it's hard to tell if I got all the lines or not. But, all right, let's clean that up. All right, let's see. So we're just gently erasing all the pencil marks. All right, so we've got our line work down. Now, the fun part. So let me move this out of the way because I don't want to get ink all over it. So I have my little palette here. So now we're gonna shake these up. They probably don't have to be shook too bad because I just used them last night. So I got my blue. So this is what I've been doing. I take my blue, I put a couple, couple drops of that. And then I'm gonna Make sure I actually have some in there. Put a couple drops of that. And then what I have been doing, actually, in the middle here, I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Cause I realized when I mix these two together, I get a really nice lavender purple. So this is where my little squeeze bottle comes in because it makes it really easy to just because I like to start by diluting my ink down because you it's one of those things kind of like the same thing with the lines like you you want to start out light because you can always go darker you can always add more layers of ink but it's kind of hard to like go back so let's see and this might, I might have to and then Where's my, pen? you can see my scratch paper here. All right, so I can tell this needs more orange because I'm trying to make like a purple. And it's still a little too, there we go. You see that? We got purple. All right. So we got those and off to the side, I have this like rag that I use to wipe my brush off. Hopefully I clean my palette good enough. All right, so that looks good. So I'm just mixing up all my ink right now. I put some in the thing, in the wells of my palette. 
I dilute it down with some water because we can always add more ink if we want to darken stuff, which I will. I just want to make sure I diluted that down enough. I might put a little bit. There we go. All right. I just want to double check my purple. The light of my foam clamp makes it look yeah, that's good. All right, so let's move that. Let me situate myself. All right, so my ink's gonna be off to the side. Hopefully I don't splash it everywhere. We're gonna hope for the best. I tend to make a mess though, so we'll see what happens. All right, I got my scratch paper, my palette's over here, you can't see it. I got my little water cup. All right, so now I have to think, what do I wanna, I already know, I want, I've been using a lot, using like this reddish, it's almost reddish orange color is like my main color for a lot of them. So I think orange is gonna be the main color even though this is technically a red, when you dilute it down, it looks more orange. And I am very happy. With so we're gonna have an orange band. Oh, thanks guys. Thanks Suzanne. And thank you, Manda Cakes. Thank you, I'm glad you like it. I'm hoping it comes out good. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so I'm just thinking. So I want another trick that I do is, I don't know if you can really tell, but there's a lot of ink like welled up in that spot. So if you wipe your brush off, like I'm doing on my little um, towel over here and then bring the brush back in, it will soak up that extra pigment if it's too wet. If you did too much of a big glob of ink, so like, I'm wiping my brush off and then going back in and kind of picking up some of the liquid because I don't want to smear it. And I do want that to be kind of a light color. So going in and just putting some down and then wipe, pulling some of that color back up with my brush once I wipe it off. All right. Now I'm thinking, 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 thinking. I didn't really plan out how I wanted the colors to be for this. So we're kind of just playing it by ear. But I know I want my orange to be like the main Color. So I'm just wiping my brush off and like pulling up some of the liquid. Oh, thought I smeared it for a second. It's very likely that I'm gonna smear this at some point, but that's okay. It's all part of the process. All right, oh, we got more up here. And then I was thinking about it and these bottles are clear. So I'm gonna pull down some orange like that. Cause you would see it through the bottle through the, cause you'd see like the cork through the neck of the bottle cause these are all clear. Make this one orange too. There we go. Make this whole lid orange. I'm 
just wiping because I put too much ink on my brush so I'm just sucking up some of that and I think I'm gonna make this orange too turn you sideways all right all right we got some orange magic I don't I don't know what's going on here I think that's a magic wand <laughs> I'm not 100% I'm not sure. All right. So, let's see. I'm just trying to figure out all the orange spots I want to do. So then I can figure out what I want to do next. I want to... I might go back in with these stars and I might um, use my white gel pen and make them white. I haven't decided what the inside color of that bottle is going to be, so. And then I'm going to do this whole thing orange, but I'm probably going to go back in with my brush pen and make some of this black. And then... I'm also gonna use this for his cute little blep. I've been trying to challenge myself and pick a color that's gonna be the main, the main like focus of the piece. And then everything else kind of complements it. Really, I'm just like doing whatever feels good, to be honest with, with you guys. <laughs> just doing whatever feels good. Because this is supposed to be fun. Let's see. We'll do some orange in here. This is really little, but it's supposed to be like moss or something in this bottle. And this is going to be messy, too. But that's okay, because I'm going to, at the end, I use a white gel pen and kind of clean up some of the, if I get too crazy out of the lines. All right, so now that we have, let's see, I want this orange too. Even though it's technically red, but it looks orange to me. Because we'll, I think what I'm going to do is have this as the main color. And he's fire, so he can be orange too. We're just going to keep it simple. And I feel like, for me, because month-long cha drawing challenges are always hard for me. They've always been, like, kind of a hard thing to... Stay. I always start. I start off good, and then like I lose. Like I, I, like after the first week, I start getting off track, and then I get overwhelmed, and I'm like, oh, I'm just not gonna finish it. So this, this month, what I'm doing different. This year, what I'm doing different. There's a couple things I'm doing different. I'm keeping it simple. So instead of doing like a whole like background, I'm gonna. I'm not doing backgrounds in any of them. I'm kind of keep it simple with just everything's in the foreground. I'm not doing like a whole elaborate background. Um, keeping it simple. What helps me is I know that I'm going to use the same characters every time and put them in different situations for each prompt. And that helps because it kind of gives me structure. Okay. Like I know who my characters are going to be in the, in the piece. Now I got to figure out what, how am I going to use this prompt? to um with those characters and that's helped me and then the other thing that really helps that I am I mean it's only day five 
But so far, sketching a day ahead of time. So what I've been doing is sketching, except for, well, I did the, I did most of the sketch last night. So I'm sketching like the day before, the night before and getting like a, at least a rough sketch done and then inking it that day. Cause I don't know if everyone has the same issue I do, but generally speaking, my, my preliminary sketch takes the longest out of everything. So if I get that out of the way the night before, then I can just have fun inking the day of, like right now. So I'm literally just using the same color making, I've been using it for their blushy cheeks. Cause you know, my ghosts have to have blushy cheeks. That is very important. Pretty much all the characters I draw, they always have blushy cheeks. And bleps, that's pretty common too. So we're just going, since I'm already using this lighter diluted color and that's what I do for the cheeks anyways. So I'm doing that same thing where if I put too much down at once, I'm kind of spreading it and taking my brush and going over here and just wiping, kind of wiping off the excess ink and then picking up whatever extra there is. All right. Do I want to do blushy cheeks on the, the skeleton? What do you guys think? Because I'm leaning towards yes. Maybe not this one because he's, oh, maybe. But I think, I think I want, I just want everything to have blushy cheeks on this. Little baby blushy cheek. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, well, I'm doing it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to attempt to make little, little, little tiny ones. Let's pull up some of that. That's too dark. Little baby blushy cheeks. All right, let's see. I'm actually... I know this looks kind of boring right now because it's just like one color, but I promise you it's going to come together. I'm just at this point trying to figure out, okay, what do I, where do I want the stuff? This is a label back here on this one. So I'm going to make that orange too. Thanks guys. I'm trying my best to keep an eye on the chat. I promise I'm not ignoring you guys. <laughs> All right. You know what? We're just going to go for it. And then we're going to make the tiniest little blushy cheeks on him too. Oh my gosh. Literally anything I can find to put blushy cheeks on, I will. It's ridiculous, honestly. All right, I'm just looking, I'm gonna, I'm almost done with my orange, at least this light one, but I wanna make this. So you see, I don't know if you can see this, how there's a lot of liquid like on that. So I'm doing that same thing where I'm just gonna pull it up. I will say this paintbrush that came with the Art Snacks box, I really like it because it holds a lot of ink at once. But I also have to be careful because then I put big blobs of it. But I'm just gonna pull some of it up. And it's okay if it's not perfect or in the lines because, you know, we're having fun. And this is about doing art every day and having fun with it. All right. So, okay. So now what I'm gonna go in with my purple, which I might, so I'm gonna move this for a second. So my purple, which looks black, but I'm using the same, you can tell I've been using the same scratch paper the whole time so far. So it's a little dark. So what I'm gonna do is another thing I have is a little ink dropper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna put it over here. 
like a couple drops. And I actually, I might take a little more of the blue. So I'm gonna do, well, I'm gonna clean my ink dropper out because I don't wanna get ink all crusted in there. I wanted that little more, little more blue. Boop, boop, boop. All right. And what I want to do is I want to dilute this down because I want to keep this because I can make darker purples, but I'm going to add water to this. Let's see. A little bit more. Because I want to start off light. Okay, I think that's good. Oop. I smacked my pumpkin here. I got the tiniest, tiniest little pumpkin. I saw them at the grocery store and I'm like, I want to find the smallest pumpkin possible. All right, so I got like a very diluted purple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, well, it's not as diluted, but that's okay. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off a little bit. I'm gonna go in and make some of my shadows. And some of the stuff I'm not going to be putting ink on at all because I'm gonna, like the hat, the main part of the hat is gonna be black, so I'm gonna use one of the brush pens. So we're gonna go in and the inside of this hat, we'll have that purple. And then Let's see. And then I'm also gonna use this, I'm gonna make sure I don't have like a lot of ink because I always do this shadow at the bottom of my ghost. So I'm just gonna put that in. and try not to paint over the, the orange, but I probably would make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. So I'm just doing his little like bottom shadow that he has. I'll just bring it up there. That way it kind of contrasts because I'm gonna leave this skull uh, white. So it kind of contrasts the skull I'm actually gonna bring this up a little bit. And that will contrast this bottle too. All right, so we got that. And then we'll do a little bit, a little bit of shadow over here because this arm's kind of on the other side of his body, further away from us. And we'll do a little tiny bit underneath the bottle. I'll do a little bit up here too. All right. And then, uh, let's see. I'll do my shadows on these guys. go we got a little shadow on him and we're gonna come down here do a little shadow on this guy wipe some of this up and bring it over here and then this guy I don't really have a master plan for any of this I'm kind of just doing doing what feels good still so no no pressure here do a little shadow on his arm where he's holding the wand and then we're gonna i think the wand this part of the wand is gonna be black so i'm not gonna worry about doing a shadow on that um let's see 
I think I'll do this purple for now, but I think this this jar might end up being black. Um, so we're gonna go in here and kind of, and I think I'm gonna make this darker cause I kind of want this to look like the night sky in a bottle. But as I said, I'm just gonna start out light. That way I can figure out, kind of add more as I go. There we go. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do a light purple in here too. Cause I just wanna make a contrast between like the edges of the bottle and the inside. So I'm adding some darker in here. That way it stays interesting. Trying to leave like a white outline. Trying. I kind of like how a lot of my, so far like a lot of these that I've done are kind of like a little bit more on the messy side because I'm very much a perfectionist when it comes to, to what I do and it's like trying to loosen up a little bit, you know? And doing, I feel like ink in particular helps me with that because it has a tendency to sometimes just do what it wants. And I do make a mess. I'm gonna do some purple there. And we're gonna, we're gonna go in and add, we're actually gonna color over the cork. So I'm probably gonna go back in and add, I really, one of my favorite colors to use is like a, um, like a purple blue, like I guess a blue violet is what you would call it. So I'll probably go in with the blue and kind of add some more color. All right, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. I know I keep saying that. I'm trying to be, watch the time. All right, let's see what else I'm trying to think. Let's do a little bit of purple in here too. See, I already smeared it. I'm surprised I don't have more ink on my hands. All right. I'm thinking what I want. You know what I'm gonna do that I forgot? So you see how these corks are in the bottle? I'm actually gonna lay down a little bit of that purple over it. So it kind of has like a shadow on it. Just a little bit, just to give it that illusion that, you know, that this part's in the bottle. This one, I forgot to draw the top, but that's okay. We'll go back in and do that. We're just adding a little bit of purple. All right, I wanna add a little bit more there. All right, let's see. So I'm thinking about what I wanna do next. Cause I kinda wanna leave this kinda light but I also, so let's go in with the blue. I keep talking about the blue, so let's do the blue. Let me check, that's diluted enough. Oop, add some water to my brush and kinda Just add a little more color. I 
It's almost like a makes it look like the shadows a little bit darker and it just makes it more interesting. I'm just adding some water to kind of blend it. There we go. All right. This I definitely want to add some blue here. And then I'm going to add some down here. And I'm going to add some water. To just blend it in a little bit to that purple. And I already got a hair on there. All right. We'll add some... Oh, see, I already smeared it. That's okay though, because that's gonna be that's gonna be black. I'm just kind of adding blue random in random spots. Let's see. Um so I think. Well, I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit. I'm taking my zebra pen, which has a nib that looks like, there it is, like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna go in some of my blacks. Sometimes I'll do this step where I, I put the black areas in before I put the ink down, but today we did different. We're gonna do it like this. And I forgot to put, oh good, it didn't go through. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been taking my prompt list and just putting it behind just so I don't splash ink on the other pages or, you know, if I add, I mean, I, I'm testing the limits of the paper already because I do add a lot of layers, but I put it down behind just in case. So I don't, you know, mess up my uh, paper on the back behind it. All right, so we're gonna add some black in here. Uh, let's see. Deciding, I know what I'm gonna do. That's one of the reasons this is really Good that I'm just working within, you know, I'm working within what was in the Art Snacks ink box. Because it really makes you think about your choices with like color and what's going to be black. And it kind of makes you th think about, okay, how am I going to utilize everything as best as I can? And I'm actually going to attempt. in this cat paw. And if worse comes to worse, I can always go back in and put my gel pen and make the beans white instead because I kind of <laughs> I kind of lost it there. I can also do a little white down here. All right, and what I was talking about, since I'll, I, this is dry and I can show you, I take my, well, it would help if it wasn't, I take my uh, 
white gel pen and kind of clean up some of my lines. And it's not gonna like completely erase them, but it kind of makes them a little more like, cause look, I got blue on his face. And I kind of cleaned up that a little bit so it's not as obvious. That's still, oh, don't do that. I literally just did this and then smeared it. I was gonna smear it eventually, it was gonna happen. Oh, thank you, Terry. I am glad that you like my little ghost drawing. All right, let's see. We're gonna... Oh, no, that's not the one I want. It's really just figuring out as I go, what I want to do with this. We're going to make this jar black back here. And I might add a design on the label after when all the ink dries. I might go back in and there we go. Let's see. I kind of want to keep this moon white. kind of like how that looks. Um... Trying not to smear. And I might ch change my mind like right now and I'm gonna go back in and I don't want this orange, I want this stuff in here to be black. Maybe it's ink. And I actually want these guys to be black too. I think I'll do some designs on them with my the white gel pen. All right, let's see. And I probably won't finish this whole thing on live stream just because we would be here for a while. <laughs> Not that I don't want to hang out with you guys, but we would be here for a while. I'm going to wait to do the black on there because this is all still wet. You can tell I already smeared it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to decide. Oh, you know what? I forgot. An important part. A little shadow from the hat. Like, I'm just like reworking that. Like, now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put more orange in my palette. I'm going to add some water because I don't want to use this straight. And then I'm going to go in. Add a little bit darker right here. And I kind of want to blend that in more. The whole thing's just going to be darker, I guess. <laughs> I, added, I added too much. And that is okay. So now I'm just going in and making some of my orangey red a little darker. Try not 
trying to be careful about it, but just adding a little bit there, blend that in. Oh, you're welcome, Terry. I'm glad you could uh, stop by and watch for a while. Add in some more darker there. And let's see right here. Make this guy so he sticks out more. Well, we are on our way, <laughs> but it is, it has been an hour. Um, and this is like pretty, um, gotta let it dry to like add some more stuff. You can see it's all, the top is all wet, but it is getting there. Um, so I'm gonna wrap things up. I appreciate everybody hanging out with me for the last hour. Hopefully maybe you were doing your own art, maybe drawing your own jars and vials of your own. I um, would love to see them. I know a lot of people have been tagging me on Instagram with their um, Art Snacks Ink Challenge posts and keep them coming. I love seeing it. Um, trying to keep up and trying to like everybody's stuff. And then also, as Art Snacks said in the chat, um, you could join us over at Mix. It's a free uh, platform full of artists. Uh, we're all, it's an awesome community. Everybody's super positive and it's just art, all art. Um, and I post all of my finished pieces over there and also I'll, I share my sketches and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, come follow us over there on Mix. Click that link, sign up, super easy. You won't regret it. It's a great community to be a part of. Um, and other than that, like just thank you for being awesome and hanging out with me and doing art because that's what it's all about, this whole challenge. So yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Go out, make a mess, do, you know, do some art, you know? And I will see you again for the next live stream, I believe, next week. And I'm super excited to do that with you guys. All right, you have a good rest of your night. And I'll end it with Skeleton Hands. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming and hanging out. All right, guys, bye. Have a good rest of your night.